So Liverpool have officially signed Alexis McAllister. Fucking get in. First of all, delighted that we have him. Even, even the manner in which we got him. Everything that reminds me of Liverpool before this season is only a good thing. And the way we've gone about our transfer business, like we always have, well, in the last five, six years. You know, we, we've struck early. We've got a good deal. How good of a deal, you ask? <laughs> 35 million. Sound fair enough? <sighs> Shit, my... <laughs> Uh, my, my wife might divorce me, but yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah. I know, I know it's a release clause, but um, great bit of business. I've gone through a bit of a journey with uh, McAllister in the last year. He played for Brighton. I'm like, oh, right. Oh, what is he, Scottish or whatever? And then he pops up in the Argentinian World Cup team. I'm like, what's he doing there? Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. And then I'm watching the World Cup, I'm like, oh, he's actually pretty class. His dad must be Scottish and his mom must be Argentinian or something like that. Like, no, no, he's Argentinian. I've got it here. He stated that he is aware of links to Scotland. His ancestors can be traced to Donabate, Ireland. When he came back from, I was like, okay, he won the World Cup and he was a very integral part of that Argentinian team that won the World Cup and a very integral part of Brighton's meteoric rise this year. I'll be honest, when he came back from the World Cup, I'm like, this fucking guy. I'm, I'm a cynical bastard. I was like, this fucking guy thinks he's the shit now. I was like, what, what does he think, he's messy? Then it's like, McAllister links to Liverpool. Like, yeah. You know, he's actually pretty class, actually. Goal! The proof is in the pudding, and the pudding in this case is a football. Booth! Liquid football! Uh, shit! Did you see that? He must have a foot like a traction engine! But yeah, bloody delighted to get him. And he's gonna wear the legendary number 10, which, as we know, has been worn by legends of the club, such as Sadio Mane, uh, living legend, John Barnes, and of course, last but most certainly not least, Mr. Andre Voronin. So, he's in good company. But I'm, I'm very excited to see it. I'm, I'm excited about this midfield now. We've gone from having what seemed like a very static, aging midfield to now Trent is an option if he plays there or right back, but he'll he'll be there anyway. Besetic, still a teenager, I think. Uh, McAllister is young as well. So now all of a sudden we've got, you know, energy. Give me one more defensive midfielder, maybe two. Two. Actually, actually put me down for two. I would actually like to get a right back and a centre back as well. Maybe even a left back. But very excited. More excited than I thought it was going to be. I forgot how exciting a new signing is. West Ham, they won the Europa Conference League. And, uh, and I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Moisey. You know, I just liked seeing him so elated and happy i feel like to certain people who i just i have a special little interest in their career i have a special interest in their career trajectory um because i kind of thought oh he was really on the up at everton and he got the big job at united and then his reputation nosedived <laughs> it was it was great just to see him win one he looked like he really needed that and his dancing, his dancing in the dressing room. And it was all hips. Very uncle at a wedding sort of sort of vibes. And he didn't give a he didn't give a shite. Great to see the whole crowd now chanting uh, Bowen's on fire and he's shagging Danny Dyer. I mean, does Danny Dyer just have to... Because that's going to be like... I think that's going to be like a chant now that's just whenever he scores. So he's going to have to make his peace with it. How many finals come round? And I think like, and he came right to the front. <laughs> what do you make of the song? I think there's a bit of romance in it. <laughs> Who says think, about right, was think, think about it, right? It's a compliment. They're saying Bowen is on fire, right? So which he's, he is, that's which is, which is, which is unreal. Yeah. And he's also shagging Danny Dyer. <laughs> so if you think about it, it's like they're saying it can't get any better. So there's a compliment in there. 
you know, I'll tell you what, the winner in that one. Listen, sometimes I'll start the song off over West Ham. I'm not even going to lie. Other things I like this week. Uh, in Serie C playoffs, Lecco, Lecho. So the referee awarded an 86th minute penalty against Lecho, Lecco. And their owner stormed the field. And I say stormed the field. Uh, very, very slowly on one of those mobility scooters, gesturing, shake on a boy. <laughs> But they had the last laugh and they won the playoff. Um, the winning goal being scored by a player, what's his name? Christian Bonino, who was only back from a recent suspension for taking a leak on the side of the pitch. <laughs> oh, I gotta watch more Italian football. Do I? No. Here, last thing I'll say. Honestly, I don't know. I really don't plan these at all. Literally about 20 minutes ago, I decided, I think I'll do a YouTube thing today. I'll show you, I, sorry, I, I need the phone for this, but I'll show you what I'm seeing. Right. So Sheffield Wednesday, as you may know, um, won their playoff and they're getting promoted. Um, keeper David Stockdale, you heard of him? Remember him? So he's been giving it large on the old social media, which is interesting considering he was on the bench for most of the season. But do yourselves a fit. This is the Brentest thing I've ever seen. Unintentional Brent. David Stockdale 13couk Check it out. But you don't need to check it out because I'm going to show you right here. Right, so first of all, it comes up with this fancy graphic, 13. It's a picture of him with his shades down like this. All right, so I'm going to scroll. Okay, first of all, I'm going to do this Brent, Brenty. The man. You know about the goalkeeper? Now find out about the personality. I, I'm, I, I can't stop doing English accents when I read things. I don't. It's a, it's a, it's a problem. But just listen to some of the... He, he wrote this. Driven, big-hearted, straight-talking, fun. David Stockdale is a brilliant goalkeeper, but there's far more to him than just commanding presence and awesome shot stopping. <laughs> oh, humble brag here. To relax, he enjoys nothing more than spending time with his family, a low key fishing trip, or spending time driving his classic 1986 Ferrari Mondial. As his football career continues to thrive, hmm. David is ready to throw himself into other business ventures. Any Anyone got any business ventures? So we've heard about uh, the man. Now let's look at the athlete. And it has all the stats here. <laughs> this is a great one. This is a man who has tasted the very top of the game, but was not too proud to go on loan to League Two Stevenage in 2020. <laughs> like, that's fine. It's just the way he's positioning himself. The f the f the philanthropist. Strings to Brent's bow, a eh? Philanthropist. This gentle giant wants to make a difference. He, he wrote this. His distinguished yet everyman character makes him perfect for advertising campaigns for high-end male-targeted products. No women allowed. And look, I want to talk, most of my following on social media is like 90% men. I'll tell you one thing, my TikTok is so close to being banned. I've got two strikes. The, the Premier League are obviously coming for me now. Let's just say I'm a marked man. Uh, I know. On my TikTok, on my Twitter, my Twitter got locked a few weeks ago after Martin Keown had his whole anti-Martin Tyler thing. I got tagged and loads of stuff. The wrong people seen it and my account got locked. And on TikTok, I have two strikes in the last week. And they're from old videos from like last year. So they're obviously going to find, I, I should probably just delete all the videos. Anyway, this was a very impromptu ramble. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, um, and check me out next week. I'll keep. I'll see. I'll keep my ear to the ground on all things Liverpool. If you're in Dublin, if you're in Ireland or Dublin, I'll be doing. I'll be doing a live show in mid July, um, and I'll have more info on that next week. It'll be like a live podcast sort of format, but. Um, and I'll have a few guests and all that. It'll be it'll be very fun. I'm not giving it the full. I wouldn't go based on that description, but it'll be better. It'll be better than I've described it. <laughs> it's hot in here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the support, and I'll see you next week.